Are you so excited for your new room? Yeah. Yeah? Why do you take my brush off my on the cheek? Oh, I didn't. You had a little piece of hair sticking out, so I just was putting it down. Oh. Yeah. What's up guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be part two of creating a room um, doing a DIY addition DIY bedroom using our current square footage not building out and doing it on a budget for part one we did show you guys how we put up this wall if you guys are excited for part two make sure you guys stick around if this is your first time here you guys welcome and thank you so much for joining me I would love it if you guys stuck around by subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell so you're notified every time I upload a video so in part one of our DIY addition um, I just kind of took you along on how we added the partition wall I did have two common questions in regards to the last video the first one was concerns about a permit did I get a permit this particular project did not require a permit I would highly suggest you guys check in with your city regarding permits and all of that the second question was why did we add insulation to an indoor wall um I don't know <laughs> I told you guys in that video we're not professionals this is our first time doing a project like this insulation will probably help with the noise reduction coming from this room to this room I don't feel like it's gonna be a huge difference but any little bit helps considering that this is gonna be my daughter's room um, and then also you guys there is no window in this room because it's our, it used to be our dining area and then the wall Next to it, that's actually our garage and then the other side of the family room and stuff. Hi, Milani. So we do have a door right over here that leads into the hallway and to the kitchen. And then we have this really huge opening here. And then I'm also gonna be including some locks, some more security for the front door and all of that just to make sure that she is completely safe. Our bedroom is literally just a few steps away going that way. And then I feel like it's gonna be so much more convenient and easy for me, especially when I'm doing a lot of work online and stuff that I can be here in the living room if I need to be. And my daughter can just be here so we're gonna create a whole toddler room and then also sort of a play area for her all right guys so let's go ahead and get on to part two of creating a diy room this is where we left off last week we haven't really done much just we haven't had much time so we're finally gonna get to the next step started um here is that wall the partition wall um you guys can see here that you can still see a little bit of the metal like the metal corner pieces but if you come over here to the wall that was done professionally you can see the metal pieces so we're not too worried about that we're just gonna go ahead and sand down any pieces like this one I mean they kind of just come right off but we're just gonna sand it down so it's nice and smooth and then um, you guys can clearly see the difference in the wall here I'm gonna start patching up all the holes this was a dining area so there have been a lot of signs put up throughout the years that we've lived here so so I'm just gonna start taking anything down there's still little nails in here patch everything up um, we haven't patched this up from when we put our floor down we had to take the baseboard off, so I'm gonna fill all of that. Hi, where are you going? Well, I'm going to go oh, okay. Well, I'm not oh, okay. And then I'm gonna take the mirror down, all of that, and again, just start patch, start patching everything up. Then we're gonna prime this. The primer has to sit for a couple hours. So while the primer sets and stuff, we're gonna start painting this wall and this wall. And then we're going to hold off on this one until the texture is sprayed. So then once that's dry, sprayed, we'll start painting that one. And then we'll start painting this one. And then I'm also going to be ordering um, a new light fixture that you guys voted on in my community tab. What you doing, baby? Let's go. It's not Easter. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then I'm also going to be painting this wall um, because we're going to have to put the rail or the... Bye, baby. We're going to have to put the rail up here for the barn door, so I just, I don't want to have to worry about that later. All right, let's get started. Right, 
so after removing any leftover nails and stuff, I'm going to take this dry deck spackling just to patch up all the holes um, from screws, nails, tacks, and then I'm also going to be filling that part. Ooh, my husband coming clutch with that Dutch Bros, though. Um, so <laughs> after I patch all those up, I will be going down to the baseboards and the baseboards are lower than they were before because before we used to have carpet all along this room. And so after removing it and putting hardwood, it's, well, it's not hardwood, it's laminate. Anyway, it took the baseboards lower and it left all this ugly, just it, it just looks a mess. The guy that took off the baseboards wasn't super careful doing it. <laughs> and he did take off, you know, some of the wall and stuff. But it's okay. Like, the spackling works just fine. I did this I did ask my husband to sand down all the clumps left over from the mud for the drywall and he loves just you know <laughs> going at it the way that I am with spackling and caulking he is with stuff like this sanding so he he, he definitely sanded everything nice and smoothly maybe just a little too much and you guys can see my face there anyway he did a terrific job if we weren't to texture the wall that would have been like the perfect smooth wall so yeah he did great and then also on this side over here you guys can see that my wall has a chicken pox here I'm going to share with you guys a not so professional hack but it definitely saved me some time and money so instead of using the paint pans that cost like three dollars a pop um, I'm just using one of these tins from Dollar Tree and they come in a pack of like three or four or something like that all I'm going to do is add a trash bag right over it and you guys will see that it's going to be super easy cleanup and you know maybe not everybody will agree with this but <laughs> this is the way I did it and it and it turned out perfectly fine. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna be using some of that drywall primer. Um, this bucket was like $11 or something. I was gonna get a smaller one because I don't need that much primer, but the smaller one was like 10 bucks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get the bigger one. And then also this roll of plastic is from Dollar Tree. So this whole roll cost me a dollar and it was enough to do the primer, do the texturing, and then do the paint. Um, to cover the floors anyway, and so now I'm just getting all my rollers ready I did use a Dollar Tree roller and let me just tell you what do not waste your dollar on it because that thing was popping off Like every single time I rolled it would like slide off. It was super annoying So back to the primer We really only did one layer because it was enough to cover the drywall and everything and we felt pretty confident that it was going to be enough so that when we put the paint on you weren't going to be able to see the green from the drywall that it's super easy cleanup when doing this little method that I'm using and then just putting a new bag on there so the paint that I'm using for the walls is gonna be cotton gray and this is what we've been using throughout our house if you guys did have questions on that it's from Home Depot it's the bare cotton gray um, so we're gonna be doing the partition wall and then that wall that we're painting right now and then also the one on the right for some reason on these walls the the underpaint was coming through a little bit, a little bit. I don't know if it's because of the lighting or what, so we did end up doing two coats of this paint.
Okay, so while we wait for that paint to dry, I am going to start on the texture on the partition wall. And I'm just putting some tape down to hold down this plastic. That way when I start texturing, it doesn't go all over the floor. And I'm glad I did because it was a freaking mess. But it's just a matter of getting a hang of it. So I did use this wall texture pro grade in the knockdown, which was the closest to the texture that we have on our current walls. And then I also got this texture um, blade, which is kind of like, foam actually and so you he here I'm just following the directions so I've, I've never done this before this is the first time ever I just took off all the tabs that I mentioned to take off you can adjust the settings whether you want it he like heavier or a little thinner um, I thought I was going to use the thin but I ended up changing it to the thicker one and we ran out so my husband had to run to Home Depot and get a couple more of these cans and then you can also change um, like the pressure on it whether you want high pressure or low pressure you're supposed to shake it upside down for like a minute and then you shake it as you go you also when you spray it you're supposed to be about 6 to 18 inches away from the wall and do it in a circular motion and cover like 4 by 4 feet at a time um, my wall is you know not huge so I was just taking little sections at a time and you're not supposed to let it dry for more than one to two minutes once you once you spray it on there I just kind of let it sit for maybe 30 seconds and then I took the the texture knife and just ran it across the wall gently and you can see how it starts flattening that texture you guys won't see it but with the other cans that my husband brought they were a little bit different they were not the pro grade but it was a similar knockdown um, uh, texture <laughs> I shook it I followed all the directions and it was literally just like oozing out it was ridiculous it was so messy and you just have to make sure that you're shaking the can upside down as you're working so if you spray a little section try to shake it and spray again um, but overall for this being my first time doing some texture I feel like it came out pretty nice and honestly who's gonna know that it wasn't done by somebody else other than me Okay, so once the texture is down, you let it sit for about half an hour, and then after that, you can go in with paint. So I'm going to go ahead and start painting the other wall. And this is also the Bare Ultra, and this is in California Coral or something like that. It was a lot more subtle on the little card that you get. You know, you get the little sample cards. <laughs> once I started rolling it on there, I'm like, oh my god, this like Pepto-Bismol pink, sort of. Um, so I just, you know, trusted the process. I just kept going for like the first day it was a little bit of an eyesore. Um, not gonna lie. We contemplated changing it, but again, I trusted the process and I remembered that this is not going to be a room for us. It's going to be a room for our daughter and she chose this color. So we're going to go with it. Okay, so this is after my husband came back with those uh, extra cans of the texture and we're, we did go into it with the same cotton gray paint. We did two full coats and you can still sort of see some of the primer showing through. We might have to do another coat at a different time. Um, we didn't actually notice it until after but I feel like it's not going to be too big of a deal because it's going to be covered with a door on the other side anyway and then I'll probably put some stuff up to decorate Milani's room. So. Anyway, on that, you might have to do three layers of uh, the paint. Obviously, if you do a project like this, if you don't, then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so now I'm just going to go ahead and start taping down on the floor because I'm going to go into the baseboards with some white paint. And this is from Walmart. It's just a flat, matte white paint. I, You know, nothing specific in it. Um, but it's crazy how 
even just a coat of paint makes all the difference. They like look brand new. We were going to buy some new ones, but I thought, you know what? It's all right. We're just going to go ahead and paint them because there's no point in spending extra money on something that'll look just fine with a little touch up. So the old baseboards are painted and I still have to resize. Ooh, dang girl, look at that booty and those legs. You guys, I'm super proud of my leg gains because I have stick legs. So me seeing that right now was like, dang girl, you did that. <laughs> I've been working my booty off, um, working out and stuff every day almost for like a year or so. Yeah, anyway, back to the baseboard. So I just had to resize the old baseboard and just, you know, I don't have an air gun or like, a, not an air gun, but a nail gun. So I just went in there with my hammer and some trim nails and it's not that hard to do. So I was definitely a little uh, scared to do the trim myself. I was going to call my brother over to help me, but I thought, you know what, girl, you got it. That's why you got a big old sock. So I just, you know, went in there at a 45 angle, <laughs> at a 45 degree angle, I guess, depending on, you know, if it's an inside corner or an outside corner. Um, it took me a little bit of convincing myself to know that I could do it to do it. And I did. So Obviously, it's not going to look perfect or anything like that, given that walls aren't always square or at a perfect 90 degree angle. So you definitely have to work with that. But it's okay. That's why they have painter's caulk and you can fill any imperfections that you may see. Feel like I am perfecting the method of using my cock gun and you know my beads are really really nice and thin and beautiful and I feel like it kind of messes it up when I go into it with my finger but I feel like you have to do that so it goes into the crease which it kind of makes it a little bit messy if you ask me so I always do have some like wet paper towels just to clean off the excess and I don't make a ginormous mess but I feel like it does look a lot cleaner if I don't go into it with my finger but anyway that's what I do and yeah just fill in all the cracks and gaps and then also on the spaces where you nailed in or where I put nails in I'm gonna cover those too and then go into it with my paint afterwards we're talking to each other I know we feel the same about the situation like we're stuck inside a game time to get out of this circle yeah we both carry a scar as you write the part we're playing time to cherish who we are the only thing i ever wanted starts with us taking the chance not like anything we've done before oh oh yeah now it's time for something better and time for us to follow our dreams no, we can't stay no more. Oh. Come run away. Don't be afraid. We'll be okay. And I know it's the right thing to do. Let's break away. All colors will fade. Let's go our own way. Now's the time to decide what to do. And I'll stand by you. By you. I'll stand by you.
It's always mixed emotions. The first step is always hard. When you walk out of the doorway, but that's just the place to start. The only thing I ever wanted starts with us taking the chance. Not like anything we've done before. Oh, oh, yeah. Now it's time for something better. And time for us to follow our dreams. No, we can't stay no more. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of part two of our DIY room. It's coming along fairly well. We still have more stuff to do. This uh, door right here will be in part three, so you guys stay tuned for that. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you guys leave me a thumbs up. Leave me your comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. You want to, you want to wave a little bit? Yeah. Say bye, guys. Bye. Did you put my blush on? Yeah. <laughs>